It's time to see what sticky situations Ken can get himself into while combining that golden honey goodness into his sweet and savory creations. Welcome to Ken's Cooking Corner. Hey, Mr. Milam. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm trying to hang in there with the the heat and the humidity is just dumb. <laughs> like it's 98 degrees here this afternoon and with humidity. We I thought you already should have already got the norther coming down. Not yet. It doesn't hit uh we've got storm chances so it should be coming through shortly but not yet. <laughs> well, I'm ready for it to get down here and cool things off. I think it's supposed to drop like three degrees. Oh, well, she, <laughs> but we might get an inch of rain. So I'd love to have the inch of rain. Yeah. The inch of rain would be good. You guys got shafted by the hurricane. Yeah. It went way to the east of us. Yep. Didn't get anything at all and could, had the potential anything. to raise lake levels and nothing. We so. come up a little bit and then we've already dropped two feet in about a week now. Yeah. LCRA making the dollars. <laughs> brutal well what uh what honey themed concoction do you have for us i have sourdough oatmeal cookies sourdough oatmeal cookies yep sourdough that i have never heard of that <laughs> oh they're good i Another... already made them in fact i should have i don't have any in the cookie jar i'd show them to you but they are good I'm getting the impression you're on a sourdough kick. You must have it's a pretty easy. good starter going or something. I've got a good starter. In fact, I just purchased a starter. The starter I got is one that I made. It's not old. I purchased a starter that's 233 years old. That sounds Out of scary. San Francisco. <laughs> so it's going to be sour. So I'm looking forward to it. I, my with, with what I got, it's not putting the sour taste in the bread. It doesn't have a sourdough taste. This one ought to. So yeah. we'll find out. All right. So Lady how I bought it from, she says, you'll like it. That's all she'd say. She says, this is sour. <laughs> you'll says, like okay. it. It's 230 years old. It's, <laughs> you'll like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'd yeah. call that questionable. <laughs> we'll find out. All right, so how do how does one concoct a sourdough oatmeal cookie with honey? Okay. First off, you want to start with a cup of sourdough starter. And then a cup of, well, not really a cup, about two-thirds of a cup of a dark fall honey. Then one cup of cooking oil, one egg, and you mix all that together. Then you'll put two cups of oatmeal in. Uh, and I've, I've done it both ways. I've used the whole grain oats, the big ones, the long the ones you got to cook a long time, or the instant. And they're both good. Okay. And then you put one cup of flour in it. And then you mix it all up. And you'll put, while you're mixing, you'll put about a cup of raisins in it. You'll put a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of cloves, ground cloves, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of soda, half a teaspoon of salt. And you'll mix all your liquid ingredients, your oil, your sourdough starter, your egg, Mix that all together. Then you'll put your flour in and your oatmeal and your spices. Mix that all together. You probably have to get in there with your hands and go to squeezing it all. And then you take it, roll it into size into balls about the size of a golf ball. Okay. Golf ball sized balls yep. of oats. Yep. Then you take it, just put it on a sheet. Cook it for at 350 degrees for roughly 10 to 12 minutes. And it's a soft cookie. It's a soft. I mean, it's it's not a hard cookie. When you put the ball on the cookie sheet, do you leave it in the ball form or do you press it down a little bit? No, I press it just a little, very little. It's mostly in the ball form. Okay. And that way it stays thick. 
Yeah. And uh, but now I've made it also. I've used the oil, and I have used two sticks of butter in it also. I like the butter better. Okay. Not the oil, but use the butter. So you can and, swap out the oil for butter. Yep, and that's pretty much it. Just cook them up and put them in the in the cookie jar and have you a cup of hot coffee in the morning and your oatmeal and a cookie. There you go. I would I would make one change, and that's just because I'm not a big fan of raisins. So personally, <laughs> anytime a recipe calls for raisins, I will switch it with craisins instead and do the dried cranberries. That would work. I have some dried cherries, and I want to try that with them. That would be good, too. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know why I'm not. Are the tart. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not a fan of, of the raisins. I think it's because a lot of the old school recipes, you know, like grandma would bake something. It would call for the raisins to be soaked. And so then they're all no. fat and squishy. And I'm like, yeah. and so it, it turned me off of them. I can eat raisins out of a box as a snack, but I don't want them in any of my baked goods. <laughs> I know. Now, I have also made it with chocolate chips and chopped up pecans and walnuts. Yeah, I've done like a chocolate oatmeal cookie before. Those are pretty good. Yep, those are real good. Yeah, so you and that way I you, put the raisins in it, but then I put chocolate chips and oat and walnuts in it too. Yeah, you can uh, use the base to make everything up, and then just mm -hmm. add in the extra stuff for some extra flair or flavor. Yep. Ah. I'm I'm making. Let's see tomorrow. And I'll make, I'll probably take some pictures. I need to take some pictures and send it to you. But uh, I'm going to make a raisin, cinnamon raisin bread, sourdough cinnamon raisin bread. And it ain't nothing again to with the it. theme. Everybody's all going to be sourdough. <laughs> Last I, I time we had the sourdough, sourdough Hawaiian honey bread, and now you're going to have sourdough oatmeal raisin cookies. And the next yep. time is sourdough raisin bread <laughs> yep. uh one of the reasons i like using sourdough is it just has a little different flavor a little different consistency and they're good it's good it's good stuff makes some great bread uh in fact i made a potato bread i made a sourdough starter out of potato flakes okay and you talk about good, soft bread. Yeah. Most your sourdough bread is a hard bread, but if you use the potato starter, uh -uh, it's soft. Yeah. So have you ever done, okay, the leading question, but okay. uh, the dried pita chips where it's almost kind of like a cracker, but it started off as a pita and then they, they dehydrate it down. I have made Cheez-Its. Okay, that'd be very similar. Yeah, sourdough um, cheese it. There was a there was a person that used to be at one of the northern flea market, not flea markets, um, farmer markets there in Austin, uh -huh. and that that's all they did was sourdough stuff. But they would have this container of basically like a sourdough cracker or or kind of like the pita, but it was made oh, out yeah. of sourdough. Crackers are easy. And then to make. they would have all kinds of different flavors too, though. So you could get like. A, like oh, yeah. an all seasoning, you could get one that was garlic, you know, oh yep. my God, those things were so good. We would buy a container it. and they'd basically be gone before we made it home. <laughs> there ain't nothing to making it. I mean, it's nothing to making. All your sourdough to make the starter, you put half a cup of flour in a jar, pour half a cup, well, maybe not quite a half a cup, put about a third cup of water, uh, stir it up. Let us say put a coffee filter on it, put a rubber band over the coffee filter, set it somewhere, and leave it alone for two or three days. Then you'll pull it down. You'll put another two or three tablespoons of flour in there, a little more water, stir it up. And you do that for about five or six days. And you got sourdough starter. How long? So after a certain point, do you leave yours since how you're currently like uh, actively doing things with it? Do you leave it out and just keep feeding it or do if you ever I'm, put it in the fridge I'm and make it go dormant? If I'm using it regularly, I do. Yeah. If like right now I have all my starter in, in the refrigerator. Now I, I, well, I'm glad I, I'm glad you asked me that. I got <laughs> to take it out. out 
and feed it tonight so I can cook with it tomorrow. There you go. That's all it really needs to just kind of come up to room temperature, give it a feeding yep. so it goes back through the process and then it's good yep. to go. And don't say it. Uh, what I've been doing, I set some outside the other day. Oh God. I was letting them rise in the, in the pan. In the heat. <laughs> oh, oh man. You talk, it overflowed and run all over the refrigerator and yeah, but, uh, or the deep freeze outside in the garage and, uh, yeah, heat makes it, it activates it. Let me yeah. tell you, it does. Uh, if you want to just have that, that sourdough flavor let it rise in the house and let it rise for 12 or 13 hours. That way the sour taste soaks into the bread. So and mine doesn't have a sour taste yet. Your, uh, your starter. So let's hypothetically say that you've got two cups of starter in the container yeah. and you take a cup of it to put into this recipe for the right. cookies. What do you do to that container of starter after that? Do you add more to it to build it back up? That's all I do. Do you know what the oldest sourdough is? The starter is? No. 5,000 years old. Oh. Did they find it in the tomb with the pharaohs with the honey? <laughs> That's exactly what they did. They found the dried grain, the dried dehydrated sourdough in his pot. They scraped it out, ground it, mixed a little water in it, and it took off. You know, you gotta you gotta wonder sometimes just how bizarre and sick of a species we are that we will come across some old ancient pot, scrape <laughs> something out of it, sniff it, and be like, Yeah, sure, we can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you know, what got me started doing sourdough is we listened to the uh book. Alaska. Okay. And uh, we listened to it online, which for 59 hours, but with what, how they brought sourdough to Alaska, I mean, they'd have to pack it under their clothes to keep it from freezing in the wintertime. Yeah. And I, I just, you know, I got to try it. I love to cook anyway. You know that. Yeah. So I got to cooking and using it and, I've learned a lot of different ways. In fact, you can make pie crust with it. Yeah, that makes sense. Sourdough pie yeah. crust. Oh, it's uh, to make, uh, if you want to make easy pancakes, you just take the starter, dump it on the griddle and cook it. <laughs> okay. And that's an easy pancake. That's an easy sourdough pancake. Just scoop yep. it out of the pot and plop it on the griddle. Yep. And uh, the biscuits and sourdough pancakes. Now, I'll make my biscuits like I make regular biscuits, but I'll put my sourdough in there. Now, I'm really, <laughs> really looking forward to getting this 230-year-old tangy sourdough because then I can make some good sourdough pancakes and biscuits with that. And the sourdough basically is being created by the natural yeast and fungus that is found on the flour Yep. And then and the water well, you, just kind of helps activate it, gives it the moisture. Yes. If you use like a whole wheat, if you're making your sourdough starter first, you use a whole wheat flour or a rye flour. Okay. So because a richer... that has the, the organisms on it. Gotcha. Because it still and, has the uh, hole and everything in it. Also, of... your sourdough is easier to digest because it's already partially digested <laughs> uh, oh i've got into making sauerkraut i've i've fermenting right now i've got i fermented a bunch of jalapenos and made pickled jalapenos yeah now my pickles i put them in the carport and they got too hot when you first make them when you're setting it up to start souring you don't want to have, get it too hot. Yeah. In fact, pickles, you want to sour about 70 to 72 degrees. Ferment them. I put them over in the garage and it was probably 95. Is it the same thing? Already. You're just adding water to the pickles and letting it sit? Water and salt. You got to have salt. salt. Salt is what makes it all work. Okay. Salt, what keeps it from rotting. Uh, 
you know, at one time, salt was worth more than gold. Yeah. Back when they were doing the the hunter-gatherer foraging and everything else and trade yep. routes, yep. salt was a big commodity. Yep. Had to, that's how they preserved meat. That's how they made everything. Uh, have you ever had kefir? Yeah. I make milk kefir. And uh haven't got it. Well, I've made mozzarella cheese, but uh and cream cheese, but all this stuff is you know, it's something I've always enjoyed doing is old stuff, and that's what I'm doing now, and I'm enjoying it. I haven't ever done the the fermented vegetables and things like that, but I would do pickling. So I would yeah. purposely go through and I'd pickle uh typically cucumbers and then mix in some onions and a little bit of jalapenos yep. or some other types of peppers and kind of have a concoction in the jar. I would usually do that every summer, but that was also, you know, go to the farmer's market. You could grow whatever you could there at the house, go to the farmer's market, pick up some stuff that week, take it home, put it in the jars. We did a lot of uh, refrigerator pickles, which didn't take quite as long Yep. and put those in there. That was, that was kind of a, uh, instant gratification almost method to that you know leave them in there for a few weeks and you're good to go <laughs> so yeah you know what bread and why they made bread and butter pickles i love bread and butter pickles but i've never tried to make them how did they start that oh, they're easy the reason they started them was to make sandwiches out of them okay well yeah like the original sandwich pickle kind of thing yep like a cucumber sandwich yeah. which I'm not a fan of. I want meat in my sandwich. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, the more I've got into doing all the learning, fermenting and, and, and doing the different things. And, and they, oh, well, the reason they started fermenting cucumbers was to preserve them. And that then also in the, in the Great Depression, they would make sandwiches out of them. Interesting. So it would be I just said, the okay. bread and butter pickles, hence bread and butter because that's all that's going on there is the pickles yep, and that's bread and butter. <laughs> yep. That's funny. You know, you talk about wanting meat on your sandwiches. Growing up, my mom used to do a lot of BLTs, and uh -huh. I would always have a B, and you can keep the L and the T. I don't want it. So I would just have <laughs> bread and some Miracle Whip and some bacon, and that was my sandwich. <laughs> that's pretty much the right way I look at it. It's pretty now, tasty. Yeah, I will put lettuce and tomatoes on it, but yeah eh, yeah i like my <laughs> salad on the side as a salad i don't i don't yeah. typically want it with my meats and other stuff you know as far as like tomatoes and lettuces and things like that the leafy greens i'll eat those on the side but i don't want them on my burgers i don't want them in sandwiches nah i just i don't know why i've always been that way but yeah so um right I'm now food. we're getting some good cantaloupe i don't know if you're getting good cantaloupe up there but dang we're getting some good cantaloupe we had a good watermelon the other day. Um, we did actually have a cantaloupe that was pretty good. So we've been hedging our bets. So we buy two of whatever it's going to be. We open both of them up and whichever one looks tastier, we keep or us. And the other one we give to the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> that way the chickens uh, get a treat. They get something to kind of help keep them cool and, and give them some entertainment or give you know, me entertainment. The seeds out of the one that you like, take them and dry them and then plant them. Yeah. Um, sometimes the seeds can be tricky when you get into the gourd family of things, because if you're growing a lot of other things that are in the same line of like gourd categories, yeah, watermelon, they can yeah. cross pollinate and then the seeds they don't do. necessarily produce what you think they're going to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That can be tricky. Um, that, that happens with pumpkins a lot too. If people grow a lot of pumpkins, you might have a gorgeous pumpkin that's like really interestingly striped and colored and you take the seeds from it and, and you, you either grow a gourd or you grow, you know, a typical orange pumpkin or something that's not what you were thinking at all. Yep. We've got a guy over in Mason this last uh, Halloween. He is selling his pumpkins. He raises pumpkins. It's sand, deep sandy land. He had pumpkins that were a hundred pounds huge pumpkins when they get that big i i only like them when they're shaped like 
Halloween style pumpkin. When they get so big, they start looking squashed and strange. I'm like, yeah, that's interesting, but I, that's not what I envision having. <laughs> like, you know, you don't like the squashed pumpkins. I want a big freaking like brown peanuts. pumpkin. Yeah, I, I want I want the the great pumpkin Charlie Brown. Like, I want a big freaking pumpkin that looks like a pumpkin. <laughs> Well, he had a bunch of them that did, but uh, he had a bunch of deformed ones too. Yeah. He was selling them cheap because once they get so big, he can't sell them. Well, that that's yeah. I I would imagine a lot of people can't necessarily transport them. <laughs> no, he was just letting them rot in the field, and I pulled over. I says, "You got big pumpkins you want to sell? Oh yeah." So I guess I got a big pumpkin. That's cool. <laughs> Very cool. Well, uh, switching over from fall themed things, uh, okay. how are your bees doing right now with all the heat and humidity? They are all over the outside of the, all of the boxes. They are cooling, keeping it, trying to keep the hive, the hive, the box cool. The yeah. brew box. Lots of bearding going on, huh? Oh, I was doing a lot of bearding. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, any uh, any indications that there's a potential honey harvest in your future for this year? <laughs> that expression you know, said a lot. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to think. Uh, the lakes come up a little bit. They're not coming to uh, the bird water, bird baths like they were. And uh, <laughs> the, the hummingbirds are getting to come to the hummingbird feeders now. The bees aren't because going there. Uh, the the bees were all over the hummingbird feeders. Yeah. Now they're getting to come in, but eh, everything's good, really. Yeah. Well, we're uh, we're in a weird spot here. I do not think uh, I might get maybe three or four actual combs to harvest out of a top really? bar, um, and that's probably it. So we're we gonna got... have some honey. We're yeah. having honey. Well, that's good. We got screwed this year. Uh, it didn't, we didn't get any rain in March and April when we should have, and we got way too much in May. And then the temperature skyrocketed into June as soon as the rain stopped. And so we have colonies that are just now starting to get liquid in them and have no food stores. So we're looking at potentially feeding through the rest of July and August as opposed to harvesting. Yeah. Uh, I figure. If it starts raining, I think I know the mosquito blooming now. White brush is blooming because we had a pretty good shower last week. And so looks like we're gonna have a lot of broom weed. That'll be yeah, that'll be fall though, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'll be fall. Yeah. And then we had earlier this year, we had a bunch of horse mint. I mean a bunch of it. Nice. A lot more than I've ever seen. That's not something well, I'm that we have up here. I'm looking forward to trying that. That's a, the horse mint is not something that I have seen up here at all. Oh, we that's... have bee balm. There is some actually really crazy looking bee balm that grows in the forest. It is the most gangly, straggly looking thing, but makes these big white, you know, same as like the horse mint and stuff or the, any of the bombs, but big white thing of flowers. But you find them on the forest floor in the middle of the leaves in the middle of nowhere. It's just like there's this random three or four Briggs basically that have flowers on them. You're like, what the hell is that? So, <laughs> but they're not plentiful enough to justify saying, oh yeah, you can get a harvest from that. It's like, yeah, some of the native bees may may get something from it, but I don't even know if the honeybees even bother with it because it's like a plant every so often, as opposed. You don't to, have sourwood up there? Not up here, no. The, the sourwood's more in your uh, Georgia, North Carolina, South, South Carolina, Carolina North Carolina, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have we have a lot of uh, blossom tree blossom type stuff, but it's all spring um, for the most part. There's a couple of things up here that are different or unique. Um, there is a tree that is a type of like chestnut, but I can't remember what I would say it wrong if I tried to say it. It's like um, and, and here I'm going to try it, but it's going to be wrong. It's like uh, shit chip it's chip something like chip up one or chip chip it chon I, I can't even remember how that i'd have to have it in front of me and i'm just trying to pull it up off Chippequa? my head <laughs> no <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> a name <laughs> nope um 
Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'd be able to find it. It's a okay. chip. Nope. Oh <laughs> nope, that's <laughs> still the other. It's got a weird name, um, but it makes a flower very similar to like the mesquite. So actually, no. Um, what is that other one called? So you know how mesquite does like the tassels, right? Right, right. Think a much denser tassel and much longer. It makes a big old long tassel that comes all really? the way down. And there is a tree there in central Texas that does similar. And I cannot remember what the heck the stupid thing is called. Tal uh, um, tallow. Tallow. It looks very much like the tallow blossoms, how they, mm -hmm. they hang down real low, but it's a real dense packed um, yellowish white kind of flower and they hang off of this tree. But apparently the tree is, is a cousin to um, like a chestnut. And so it does make a nut that is edible, but it is a rare tree. And they actually just found the largest one in the state just north of town uh, <laughs> over on some land that a friend of mine owns so but that does bloom it blooms usually late spring early summer and uh we've got some of the well we've got buckeye if it's been purposely planted um carolina buckthorn but that blooms also late spring early summer once you get into the the heat of the summer and on there's really not any more tree blossoms that that are prolific enough for the bees to to benefit from really um okay. we have a fall flow but it's just your typical kind of wildflower scenario there is actual goldenrod and stuff up around in the area but yeah i don't know it's just it's not it's interesting so the the sourwood that you talk about though there is a note in there that distinguishes this is sourwood honey that same note is very characteristic of most tree blossom nectars and so when you taste a regular wildflower honey that doesn't have any tree source in it, right? it tastes like what you're used to out there. But if you taste wildflower honey up here from the spring, it's going to taste like wildflower mixed with the sourwood because it'll have that note in the background that's very similar to that sourwood taste. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, that's kind of interesting. We had some honey that we had pulled on off a couple of boxes. It was fall last year and spring this year. It's good, but kind of came out me, mad. <laughs> since you you are, have showed me fall honey tastes like you know molasses and and this spring honey is good and and then mesquite's different and all of these different and so now I've got a connoisseur honey connoisseur you know that one doesn't taste good enough <laughs> no <laughs> that one's not dark enough that one's not light enough like it's in yeah. the middle it's just meh <laughs> yep yeah, that's it yep i can understand that that's for sure well uh do you uh you already have plans for your next one are you gonna you gonna teach us how to do the raisin cinnamon raisin bread you were talking about or you think you're gonna come up with some other mysterious concoction for us next time it could be sourdough. That's all I'll tell you. I'm not <laughs> We're sure. Stick what, with the uh, theme. <laughs> I, in fact, I have. I'm working. I'm. Well, I'm going to be working. I'm here for long. A sourdough muffin. Okay. So I'll make him with make some with honey and try. Them. In fact, they already. I already found a recipe for a, a honey sour a sourdough muffin with. Uh, it's got uh, cherries and walnuts in it. Very cool. That ought to be good. That does sound good. Yeah. Well, we will look forward to uh, seeing what kind of sourdough concoction you come up with next time, sir. Sounds and good. Uh, as always, for everybody out there, thanks for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, be good, everybody. Y'all be good and keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down. This Hive Jive production was made possible by amazing patrons like you. And we appreciate your support. To all our Hive Jive junkies out there, you truly are the bee's knees.